Hi, I'm Pepe. In this two-part tour, we will take you on a tour on the Imperial Palace, an impressive site in the heart of Tokyo. In the first tour, I will guide you to the section of the palace which is open to the public. In the second tour, I will take you to a stroll through the gardens and explain the history of the construction of Edo Castle in the Edo period. So let's take a quick look at our Imperial Palace tour. This Imperial Palace tour is a precious opportunity to officially enter the palace. As you stroll through the Imperial Palace, which used it to be Edo Castle, you can feel the charm of Tokyo looking back at the history of Tokyo from the Edo era to the present days. I'll also be detailing specific information on how to book a tour and how to use a multilingual guide app. The Imperial Palace is located in Chiyodaku, the heart of Tokyo, and covers a total of 2.3 million square meters. It's a surprise that such a huge space is left in the center of a crowded city like Tokyo. The Imperial Palace was a residence of Tokugawa shoguns during the Edo era. At the end of the Edo era, the Meiji Emperor moved to Edo from Kyoto, where the Emperor lived for more than 1,000 years. The Imperial family has lived ever since and conducted palace events here. The Imperial Palace consists of an Imperial residence which is close to the public except this offshore tour, Kokyo Gaien National Garden which is an open space, and the East Gardens of the Imperial Palace which can be visited during the opening hours. Tokyo's subway system is notorious for having some of the most complex subway stations and lines in the world making it an adventure challenge for foreign visitors. However, is there anything that bothers you about these cramped subway lines? Yes, there is a space in the center where there are no railway tracks. This is the site of the Imperial Palace. There is no specific rule against passing the tracks underneath the palace, but to prevent terrorism and because there are not so many passengers to access the palace, the tracks were not needed to be built underneath the palace. So while the Imperial Palace is accessible from several stations, they are all a bit distant and you will have to walk 5 to 10 minutes to get there. So I'll show you the route from Tokyo Station to Kikyomo, the gate where the guide tour starts. Reservations for the tours can be made online, over the phone, or by mail. But realistically, international visitors are probably best booked online. The tour is free and is offered twice daily in the morning and afternoon. Reservations must be made at least four days in advance. You can register one hour before the tour at the reception, or if there is a vacancy on the tour. However, the tour may be full at busy times, so I will recommend making a reservation in advance if possible. When it's time, the attendant will call you in. After passing through the gate, you will be led to the reception area. 
A multilingual tour guide brochure is available at the venue. The guide will give you a brief explanation about the tour before you go. By the way, although the tour is basically in Japanese, there is usually one English speaking guide, so don't worry. But if you would like to get more detailed information while touring, I recommend installing the official Multilinga app in advance. It's a great way to easily learn about the highlights of Imperial Palace. The tour takes about one hour and you'll be guided along the four main points. The first highlight of the tour is the Fujimi Tower, which is one of the oldest remains of Edo Castle. Although it looks very impressive, it was one of the defensive watchtowers where Mount Fuji could be seen. The castle used to have the main building called the Tenshukaku which was larger and more magnificent. But in 1657, the Great Meilek Fire, which burned most of the city of Edo, destroyed the entire keep as well. Due to financial difficulties, the castle tower was never rebuilt. And since then, Fujimi Tower has become a symbol of the castle. The Fujimi Tower can be viewed closer from the East Garden featured in part 2. Now you can see this magnificent building. This is used today as the Imperial Household Agency's office building. Walking up a long slope, and you can see a huge building and a big square. The square is called the East Courtier. The huge building is mainly used for New Year's and the national celebrations when the royal family comes out on this long balcony to greet the public. Sometimes as many as 20,000 people can gather in this square. Let's now move to the last point, Nijubashi Bridge. The wooden bridge of the Edo Ila was replaced by iron in the Meiji Ila and was richly decorated. Although Nijubashi is not the official name of the bridge, it is called Nijubashi, double bridge in Japanese, together with a double arched bridge in the foreground. This bridge is famous as the image of the Imperial Palace since it can be seen from the Kokyo Gaien National Garden, where people can freely enter. During state visits and special events, visitors would proceed through the main gate to the interior through this bridge. And you can see the Fushimi Tower close from the bridge. It is said to have been transferred from Fushimi Castle in Kyoto, but the exact circumstances of its construction are unknown. It was partly destroyed in the Great Kanto earthquake of 1923, but has been restored and still retains its beautiful appearance. You can see the remnants of such a splendid castle from the Edo era light next to the skyscrapers of modern-day Tokyo. It 
it's one of the profound charms of Tokyo. Please take the time to join us for a tour of the Imperial Palace to get a taste of Tokyo's history and the life of the Imperial family. Next, I will tell you more about the historical origins of Edo Castle and how the city was built. So stay tuned!